Alrighty, sim racers. So today I'm back. I wanted to talk about force feedback settings for the Sim Pro Manager. So for Sim Magic owners out there, if you want to learn more about the Sim Pro Manager and how to manipulate it and get what you want out of it, the feel you want, uh, stay tuned. We're gonna go through it all. It Maybe a little bit long, <laughs> but I'll try to uh, cover everything here. Let's go. All right, so before we start deep diving into the Sim Pro settings here, quickly I would recommend to go check out this video I have highlighting here uh, that will explain clipping within the game. So in other words, uh, when you would be uh, reaching the max potential of the force feedback in the game before it just went null and uh, just became just numb feeling to you, you'll want to set that up uh, first if possible so you don't end up chasing your tail. So, but let's dive into the rest of the settings. All right, so I can divide this up into many videos and stuff, but uh, like I did with the Sim Commander stuff, but I'm gonna put it all in one video and just put some uh, segmented sections in there where you can just quick, quick select to the parts that you're interested in at the end of the video. So getting into this here, we have the Sim Pro Manager. Let me see if, if I do the better, be a little bit bigger for you. Here on the Sim Pro Manager, what you get right when you have everything hooked up. You download Sim Pro Manager, Launch it and starts recognizing your devices. We'll say you've you're already past that part. You have everything uh, peachy keen. Front page is just your uh, link to the website. Some advertising going on here. My picture, and then you got Play Now. And Play Now is actually all the games that you have installed on on the Sim Manager is is recognized at this time that you have installed. So say I MS2, I can click on it. It'll come over here to this Games tab here and uh, let you launch it right here within the uh, device itself, right? Pretty cool. Uh, then here at the bottom is Quick View. Here you have all the, you only have five at this time anyways, uh, presets that are uh, telling you what's going on. Uh, this is a good way to see if you have it hooked up. Uh, if it's recognized and say, like in this case, my rim, or of course my wheelbase, or my handbrake is being recognized, shifter. Y'all notice, I actually have two shifters hooked up, so I have this, uh, H pattern shifter and then I have the sequential shifter hooked up. It doesn't list all of them here. If you come over here to the devices, which is the next segment, is when you go into the devices, you will have everything listed that you have hooked up. It doesn't matter if you have it hooked up USB connection or if you have it hooked up through a USB CAN bus adapter, which is what I have hooked up now. I actually, I would recommend getting that one if you're gonna run multiple Sim Magic products other than space and a wheel. If you're going to want to run your shifters and handbrake or multiple shifters like I do, pedals and so on, you'll want to get that CAN bus. That way that the uh, software recognizes, or each game individually will, will recognize just one connection. And you can set all your in-game functions, your paddles, your, your shifters, your handbrakes, all of that within just one, one feature within the game instead of having to go look for where your pedals are and then bind all those up together and then it'll go look where your rim itself is, bind those up together and so on, right? Uh, but yeah, that's it's pretty handy. Actually, the, your rim, even if you don't have the CAN bus, will be identified as one object anyways because it's linked Bluetooth to your base. So that'll actually work just fine right off the bat, not the others. So here we got all the devices uh, set up here. I'll cover some some settings here on the devices here. I'll start, I'll go from right to left, even though that's wrong, but it's easier to knock these out uh, this way. Uh, handbrake, of course, I have the handbrake here. When I give it a pull, you can see what's going on. When I get reach 100%, the red bar is, is my effort. Uh, I'm sorry, the red bar is the software recognizing when I'm at 100%, which is telling the game I'm at 100%. The white bar is my effort. So if I pull a little harder, you see the white bar then travels a little bit further. So I'm actually reaching 100% before I have to fully engage the shifter. Now the reason that is, is because it's not very apparent, but you can slide these around here. You can click on it with a little hand here and slide it over. So if I have it to the far max, then I have to put more effort in it, or travel, right, uh, to get it there. 
Uh, I like it like that because it's just a little bit less travel to grab when I rip the brake to get to a full 100%, but two weeks should around. And then of course you have these, these parameters here for convex and, and uh, concave and uh, the S curve here where you can just automatically change them to what you want. Uh, experiment with them is what I would suggest. I generally go line, line, linear, <laughs> linearity here. And then, oh, also you can adjust the dead zone here as well. So if you have a little bit of uh, dead zone picking up uh, in, in game and it's dragging, you can just come right over here and just move the slider slightly, eliminate that dead zone. Uh, most games offer you to offer that setting anyways, but it's here as well. Feedback, uh, click on feedback. This is where if you have the vibrating motors to the handbrake, which is pretty cool. I actually do have that on order from Apex Sim Racing, uh, which <laughs> I'll give a plug. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel, check out Apex Sim Racing for all your Sim Magic gear. Actually, Sim Magic, Moza, uh, all kind of D-Box, all kind of gear uh, that you can get from them. And uh, you can use my discount code TJRSIM get five percent off of the Apex products themselves, which they produce a lot of uh, button boxes and, and, and other surrounding apparel as well. So check it out in my affiliate link. Link tree link has all my. All my stuff in there so thanks for supporting the channel if you use it and carry on here on the vibrate and here you can uh, set obviously your strength of how how active it is and then your hertz which is basically the frequency right that's going to be uh emitting and then you can turn it off or, or, or select this feedback rear lock right next is q1 actually this is pretty cool the q1 you can set sync with paddle so when i get my paddle shifters the q1 is linked together which means, and this is really it was cool because when I started off using the Q1, I got it mainly for uh, rally racing, right? And I'm grabbing through the sequential, I'll be racing a five speed, but I wasn't sure it was a five speed. And I just grab another gear. Sorry if that's loud. Grab another gear and it goes to six speed on here, which means this little number is registering six. But my car is only at fifth. And so then when I go banging down gears, I'm always off one gear. So the OCD in me is like, damn it. That sucks. Now, if I have uh, something like, say, Logitech, where I could just click the uh, paddles and move it up through the gear to match here, then that's what I would do too sometimes. However, the problem all goes away when you use it all through the CAN bus, or you actually hook this directly up to the uh, wheelbase itself. You don't have in the CAN bus or the wheelbase itself. You don't have to have the adapter for one item. Uh, but if you're using more than one Sim Magic product, you'll have to have that adapter. It's like 16 bucks. And get it through Apex Sim Racing as well, but uh, use that. So it's really nice now. A high speed car, you know, it's always registering the correct gears. Also, use it for another feature when I play Forza. If you know, I actually enjoy Forza Motorsports. I'm a weird one, but <laughs> but I have my force feedback settings where it's very fun to ri drive. And D Box is actually really good with that with that game as far as picking up everything, making it so much more immersive. But with that, you'll start off with practice laps sometimes. You don't know what gear you're in. And so if you have the H pattern shifter, I'll leave it on because now these all three are synced together through CAN bus, which meaning that I can set up my one through seven speed or eight speeds within the game software that my paddle shifters are, my paddle shifters as a setting, right? Which means I can just use my paddle shifters on my wheel or I can just go over here and grab the sequential and bang gears because it's recognized as one device that way. But anyway, I, I digress. I may be normally in first gear, but you have a rolling start and your car is in third screaming, and then you blow their engine when it comes in and gives you control of the car. So I'll, I'll just look down to see what gear I'm in, looking at this indicator here, and then I'll pop it in that gear when it registers for me. So there's a little, little quirk here. Also here, you can invert your uh, shift direction and invert your display. So depending on how you have it mounted, if you have it mounted 180 degrees around, you'd want to click those two on as well. So I don't use it because I have it mounted kind of the normal way, right? DS8X shifter that is. This is the H pattern shifter, of course. And then you have your, your H pattern sequential modes here that you can switch through. This already came pre-calibrated. Wasn't nothing I needed to do. It just works. Reviews are actually coming up on this H pattern shifter and the handbrake uh, pretty soon. Already did the unboxing if you want to go check that out. Next up, rolling through here, the GT Neo is the rim I have, but depending on whatever rim you have, you'll have different options. But this one being, I picked this rim because I 
I think this would be the most popular for people to jump into Sim Magic system. It's pretty inexpensive rim, and it's just baller, man. This is a badass rim. Uh, it has all these LEDs, of course, like you see on the screen. And uh, the paddles work amazing. I'll have a separate review out on this one as well. I actually just released the review of the Sim Magic Alpha U. Go check it out. It's a little long-winded, but covers a lot of this stuff as well, but not as in-depth as we're going to go here as far as software goes. But on this wheel here, depending on which wheel you have, a GT X Pro right here down here I'm circling, that would have more options. But each game has certain telemetry that comes in from the game. And uh, Sim Magic will pull that telemetry that it offers, just like my motion rig will pull the telemetry that is offered and then make make the motion feel like this, right? Just like your your wheel itself pulls in telemetry to feel the force feedback reacting over the bumps and curbing and the, the textures of the road and stuff. So same thing. You can actually assign all these lights as their own individual colors. So you've probably seen this before on other reviews. This isn't uh, totally new, but this is where you can, of course, sign all the colors here and the colors here, I'm sorry, and the functions of them. So I have actually. All right, sorry about that. Someone knocked on the door. Dogs went crazy. <laughs> it scared the heck out of me. Uh, but anyway, uh, going over here, you can set the different functions for your lights. Uh, ABS, like I said, I have pit for these top two. These here are actually used for uh, ABS on the right. Bottom ones, bottom four, and these uh, round ones are uh, flags. And then this top one here I use for TC as well as these buttons here. So my left side's kicking in for traction control, my right side's flashing for uh, ABS, and then the bottom half of the wheel is flashing the flags at me, sort of like yellow flag, green flag, and so on. So a uh, pretty cool feature I like. And plus you can actually go over here to the button code, click on that, and it'll identify all your buttons. So you don't really necessarily have to go back to uh, your uh, manual and try to figure out which, or look at the manual to see which buttons are which, right? So uh, some games, you you want to know the button number uh, because um, it, it doesn't uh, automatically tell you when you're in the game. So F124 is, for example, is a good example here because F124 actually has the GT Neo in the software, but I'm, Clicking on all the buttons to see what they do, right? But you can easily just come over here and look at your list to see uh, which button is signed. And then when you go into the settings within uh, the software there, with F124, you can say, oh, number eight is this function, right? So a nice little quick shortcut for you. And you can, of course, assign them different aliases as well. Uh, lighting here, this is the, the global lighting here for your wheelbase itself, or I'm sorry, your rim itself. Uh, you can dim it all the way off or full power. Uh, when you go in the lighting settings here, there's another one here called Sync with Global Brightness. If I turn this off, that means I am individually setting the RPM indicator brightness. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so that way you could have your RPM blaring at you bright at night or during the day. And then you have the rest of your wheel settings down a little bit dimmer if you want to. So nice little functionality there. I sync it because that's what I like. Now, to get here, um, as you can see here, I click on light settings. You can also just click on this RPM one here. So when you hover your mouse over here, you see that it blocks it out in white. And then you can come to the RPM gauge. Now, within here, there's a flash. So wherever you want your flash to flash at you to say, hey, you're about to uh, hit the max RPM of your vehicle, this is where you can set it. Uh, now it comes pre-selected with all these numbers here. Uh, and then of course, you know, at each percentage, these are the lights, of course, that light up, right? You can actually click on it. It's not very apparent, but you can click on it and change this. So if it's 92%, I can change this to say, I want it to come on closer when I'm really reaching the max RPM of this engine. 97% is when I want it to flash and you just change it. And that's it. Uh, you're good to go. Uh, if you do want to disable the flash, you can actually just click on this little one here. It disables the flash. You see it grays out right here. And uh, bada bing, bada bang, <laughs> you're done there. So, um, but yeah, that pretty handy stuff. Oh, you can, of course, change the colors here. So you can click on each one individually and change the colors to something else. Or you can select multiple ones at one time and then uh, change them that way as well. So, um, Pretty handy and uh, intuitive software, right? Now, moving on to the, the uh, fun, oh, 
And real quick here, let me go to took that off here. Here's you got your clutch paddles. I actually use them as buttons themselves, but if you were to click this button off, you have clutch one, clutch two, which is your left and right stick, or your right and your left stick. It just doesn't really matter. They both are in sync together. So uh and then you can change your ratios here of when, you know, say I only want clutch one, you know, one to be twenty seven percent and then clutch two, lights go green, I drop down clutch two. Uh, then you disengage your clutch, of course, power's going on, uh, and you're holding still, dragging the clutch, basically, at 27% until you bleed it off, right? So pretty cool. Then you can sync them up here as well and change this, you know, uh, to your heart's content, depending on the car that you're running, right? Um, pretty handy. I actually just use it as button mode. Now, presets here, this is cool. You got game filter, which I don't ever use, and tag filters, uh, so that's... Another one I don't ever use either. What I do use is the settings for the um, individual light sequence. So I named this particular one TJR Sim. When I click over here, you can assign uh, your your custom settings to all these different games uh, at once. And then when we get to the game menu, I'll show you where that comes in important here. Uh, but Let's just say I want it, this one to be orange all the time instead of yellow. Uh, click that off, and then I can hit save and say I want this one to be TJR Sim 1, right? I can, at this point, then click all these games that I want it to apply to, or it comes default off. Uh, but click on whatever games I want this particular one to show up on the games menu itself uh, to be an option for you in the games menu. So. If you want your RPM light show to be a, available for every game that is available in this Sim Pro Manager, then select all of them. Select all the game categories, and then you'll have the choice when you go to the Games tab to uh, select it or not, right? So to use it or not. So um, now, don't worry if you uh, <laughs> if you accidentally change something you don't remember. You can click on this little trusty revert. It's saying, do I want to discard the changes? I do. I said, okay. And then boom, you're back to your normal settings of what you wanted. You can share these out to other people, email them. Uh, and then, of course, you can you can take any one that's here and do a save as. Now, there are some presets here. So if you come up here to the top, it's the Sim Magic Fine Tune presets. These are all the presets uh, for the different, different wheels, uh, like Huracan. GT3, it changes all the lights and it just updates my wheel just live, um, just right off the bat, which is really cool. But you'll notice like one indicator, like this one's yellow, right? Instead of uh, whatever I had there before. <laughs> but uh, it's it pretty cool. So you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, Bentley, here's another one. So there's several white ones here that come in. So really cool presets that they have. I'm sure they'll come out with more. Another program is called Sim uh, Sim Hub. SimHub has something similar here to where it has multiple selections. Even I believe I've, I've heard there's even selections for you know your favorite racer that is using a certain light sequence on their on their uh, rim itself. Uh, you can download those as well. I, I don't really have a much need for for that one uh, just yet at this time. I haven't really dove into SimHub uh, because this covers all the lights I really need. Uh, and uh, I'm happy with what's presented here as a uh, as a standard, right? So um, let me see. I will change this back. Now, if you want to change it back to what your custom one is here, you can see this list is actually pretty long. Um, custom one, you just click back on this arrow here. Well, you're supposed to. Click back on the arrow. All right, so I just found an error here. <laughs> I'm trying to revert back to my standard um, custom light setting here. So this is good that I found this now. So should be another improvement. I uh, didn't run across this issue when I was doing my review, uh, but you know the uh, software is kind of deep here, so it's hard to find everything. But what I would expect to see here on this list is my custom settings here to be able to switch back. I can't click on this one, as you can see. It doesn't allow me to go backwards like, like we were saying, or like I was trying to tell you <laughs> to go backwards because that does work when you go to 
your base here uh, when you're clicking on all your custom settings you hit sim sim magic fine-tune presets you can click on that again and then your custom ones will load up here see that so this should work the same way however it does not so you could get kind of stuck <laughs> so, so you could just be selecting all of these here so if anybody knows a quick shortcut for that drop drop some uh, suggestions here in the link in the uh, description below revert didn't work either uh, which will discard all your present changes didn't do anything I could do a save as something uh, and save it as something else but I don't want to do that so the workaround that I found is come over to uh, games and then uh, pick my wheel preset that I already have in here. So, which you can come over here and select different ones that you want and click edit and go straight to the um, DT Neo base. So, I'll just click my TJR Sam one, go over here to edit, and then it converts everything back <laughs> to my original setting. So, um, yeah, you can see how that kind of works here. So, you could cloud sync these as well, it looks like, but I don't have that feature to sync it to the cloud. So not sure how that part works either. Uh, it doesn't allow me to sync this part to the cloud. So, but again, you can go over here and click, you know, and look to your heart's content as well. Uh, click out of there and you'll be back to your, to your normal settings. So that is an error. So hopefully they'll fix that in some future updates as well. But I think I covered enough on the LEDs. Uh, deep dives on that as well. So next up, let's go over the uh, wheelbase here settings. Uh, some and of the good stuff, the most important part that you're probably most interested in because uh, you've seen reviews on the rest. But the uh, steering settings here, you can uh, you know adjust your, your center. So just click center whenever you're ready. Uh, when you have it centered up, physically centered up. You can change your angles here. You can actually type in an angle here. So I want to go to 1080, hit enter then it snaps over to 1080. So any custom angle you want to put in there, you can. And there is a manager here that you can select, and drag them around to what position you want as well. And it'll change it. <laughs> Instead, you see here it live updates it. So it doesn't make sense to have it that way, but we'll go 360, 540, 900, and 1080. But that is the prefix manager. Uh, looks like you can take them away and then save to it. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, experiment on your own on that, but hard lock angle. So whatever you have selected here is gonna be a hard lock at that angle, right? Makes sense. And then your limit, your strength is basically between soft, normal, and firm, which basically if say I hit 360, just so I don't have to rotate the wheel too far. Firm is just like when you rotate it and you hit the stop in the software, it's, it's like, hitting a wall, right? Uh, hitting a rock. Normal has a little bit of uh, give in, in the wheel itself. You don't see it on screen, but it is given a little bit. And then soft gives it is even more travel in there. So it's a very soft stop. So it's handy. Just set it to your liking. Now force feedback up here. This is the, the, the main things. I would recommend your max torque for whatever your wheelbase is. Mini, alpha, or the uh, U submit here is to set that to max. Uh, you want to offer as much as you possibly can from this wheelbase instead of detuning it. And then you got force feedback. This is just a percentage of your max. So you just divide it out and then you'll know, you know obviously 50% <laughs> is, is, is half of that, right? So it's uh, 12, 12 and a half Newton meters, right? At 50%. So this is a good place to start actually. Uh, really in reality, a good place to start is to go over here to the Simagic fine tune settings, pick the game that you're going to be playing, say like MS2 discard and this will be the prefix settings that comes from from them from sim magic they say it's professionally tuned i think it probably is but it also in regards of safety for people for instance if you're new to sim racing you got a 23 newton meter wheelbase because you got money to buy one and you set everything up on 100 percent and you break your wrist <laughs> trying to race it's too strong right so these are some good preset settings to start off with, get you familiar with the game and how it works. Rotational speed isn't too high. Uh, there's some damper and friction going on here as well. So uh, to uh, keep things a little bit safe and then try to bring out as much realism to the, to the car as you can. Force feedback is highly subjective uh, to everybody. So set it the way you like it as well. I'll take this uh, standard go by here and just explain as we go. So they added a force feedback at 60%. That's fine. If you set your clipping within your game itself, 
And you may uh, be happy with, say, the Forza for me, Forza Motorsports, I run anywhere from 70 to 85%, uh, depending on what car I'm driving. There's multiple cars to play from, right? But something like AMS2, it's not so so different, right? They're all, well, most of the cars I play with are GT3 cars, but one cars will be different. Uh, but you can save these out as individual settings per car class if you wanted to as well. I'll get into that here in a second. But um, let's just say I have, well, like I mentioned in the other video, I keep around 53% for some GT3 cars. And uh, that's fine in game. I'm not clipping in, at that setting uh, at all. But with a 23 newton meter wheelbase, I have so much headroom that I can crank this bad boy on up to 100% if I wanted to. Which just all that means is that at any given point in the game, if it offers that much feedback to you, you'll be able to utilize it here on the uh, on the settings. But if you don't want it to be that risk breaking <laughs> for you, say in a crash or something like that, you know, dial it on down. You should set this force feedback to what you feel like you're you you're having fun driving. So you don't necessarily have to have a workout, something that you can be consistent to where you're driving the car instead of the car driving you, so to speak. But I do want to feel realism coming back to me uh, because let's face it, the cars drive you when you go over bumps and stuff that you aren't quite used to yet or you run across or someone hits you or something like that. Uh, but you can keep it safe by turning this down or keep it as, as hard or, or as loose as you want, right? So this is your setting for that. Now, rever reverse force feedback. That is just simply a click of a button. So if you're turning left, but your in game's turning right, you can just reverse it right here. Most games have that feature within the sim itself to adjust, but you can adjust it here on the fly, which makes it cool. All right, smoothness. This is a good one. So here, what it, you can read what it's saying here, but basically what smoothness does is it takes out your high frequency. So your high frequencies that come through that feel dirty or uh, I wanna say itchy, but uh, just a, a harsh high signal. Uh, you'll feel that coming through the wheel. Well, we don't feel that in a real car, <laughs> but so in electronic, you, you can feel that. So not every game really has that problem. Some do, or a lot do, but you can adjust the smoothness. So I, zero is going to give you the most possible feedback from the code from the game. So you'll feel everything, even the high, high, uh, high dirty signals that you can't really do nothing with anyways. So if you want to adjust them out a little bit and just turn it up drive around a half a lap or something until you notice it goes away. One does it for you, great. Maybe you have to go to two or three. I haven't had to go past three. Uh, I've tested all the way up to 10. Basically what you get with 10 is, is a very softened feel of the uh, rest of the force feedback that's going on because you smooth, you're smoothing out all the force feedback in this nature, right? Uh, not just those high frequencies. So it's a, kind of like a blanket going across every force feedback setting that's coming through you or every feedback detail rather that's coming to you, smoothing them all out. Uh, and really all you wanna do is smooth out those dirty signals, uh, frequency signals. So play around with this to get to where you're just now, you're numbing those out or, or deleting those out and then move on. Wheel rotation, now this is at 30 in this default. I recommend running 100%, which means that your wheel is gonna turn 100% if, if it needs to from the telemetry in the game. So it will be a fast turning wheel. I could see you wanting to go a little bit less. Well, obviously if you're a beginner, but uh, hey, for rally racing, you maybe don't want the wheel to spin quite so fast for you for whatever reason, but uh, I could see you want to do that. Drifting, I imagine you want to go as fast as possible so you go to 100%, but I'm not a drifter uh, on, this, <laughs> on these games uh, so much. So feedback detail, that is just basically grabbing all the possible feedback details like your road textures, your curbing, everything that all those little details are coming in. So I max this out to 20. Now, what it does warn you about is that you can be pulling in these, these dirty signals, right? So you may need to, because you go to 20 on here, you may have to run a little smoothness to smooth out some of those other details. Or you turn this down until you notice them go away. But personally, I would rather have every available detail in the game coming at me, and then I'll just smooth out what I can then go from there. I haven't had a problem where I couldn't smooth out a frequency yet on all the popular sims. So to each of their own, but that this is how I use them. Uh, now we come over here <clears throat> to mechanical damper. That is just your dampening of all the forces. So these three here, mechanical damper, friction, and inertia, 
they all dampen the feeling. Also, wheel rotation speed will dampen the feeling as well because your your wheel is is not turning quite as fast as it could. So, for instance, if you're going over a crest at say Laguna Seca, Mazda Speedway Raceway or whatever they're calling it now, and your wheel goes light, if you have your rotation and speed down, you won't really feel it so much. But if you have it all the way up to max, you'll feel that quick disconnect of the concrete, and then you have to reconnect to it. Right. So Keep those in mind. So damper, I don't ever run anything over 20%. I actually hardly ever run it at all, but uh, anything over that is just too much uh, for, me, for my liking. But play with it to see what you what you like. Friction, I actually like friction. Uh, friction does offer a little bit of basically friction as you turn this. So it's uh, you have it on zero. This wheel is super light to turn, as you can see here going on here in the display. But uh, it's, it's quicker to turn with a little bit of effort. If I go all the way up, it's very sluggish. It takes quite a bit of effort to make this turn. It actually feels like I'm turning a car steering wheel without power steering. Not quite as bad as without power steering. If you ever drove a car without power steering, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, but you can relate to it in that regard. It almost feels like you're, you're, you're uh, scrubbing the tires across the concrete pretty hard. And that would add a lot of dampening effect to you, too much friction uh, to you. So I add just a little bit around 10%. That's what I like. You can, of course, run none or whatever you like as well. That just adds a little bit of a friction that you would have normally in a car. Uh, inertia, this is a, an interesting one. This would probably be really good for drifters to speed up the wheel or to keep the wheel, actually not speed up the wheel, but keep the wheel in rotation. So with it off, if I put a little bit of, I'll turn all these off just so I have no other drag effects. But uh, if I just give it a flick, that's how far it goes. Now if I had to go turn inertia all the way up and give it a flip, got a couple turns out of it. So once in motion, stays in motion, so, right? So Newton's Law, that's what the inertia does. Uh, I don't have any need for it, but uh, that is what they do. I would suggest keeping all these off and then maybe add a little bit at a time individually so you feel what's actually going on in game to you. So pick your favorite sim, favorite car that you like driving, and just rock out with uh, with a few of these, right? Let's see what it does. All right, feedback frequency. This is the money one right here. Uh, so I'm so glad this is here. Logitech Pro doesn't have this. Uh, AccuForce doesn't have it either from what I remember. Uh, well, they do have filters. AccuForce has a ton of filters in there. So it, they do have a sim similar one, but it, you gotta deep dive so much in the software. You can check out my videos on that. I deep dive into this Sim Sim uh, Commander software. It uh, used to be kind of a pain, but they have some automatic settings now that uh, make it a lot easier to use. However, feedback frequency. What this does, it actually works a lot like smoothness does. So smoothness will will smooth over all the peaks or all the dirty signals all in one, blank, laying a blanket across it. Feedback frequency. What that does, and of course you can read it as well, but it amplifies low frequency settings. So think of road textures. The so road textures will be amplified up to where you can feel them and they'll knock off the rough edges at the top. So where you get the little peaks in the uh, road textures, that kind of smooths off the tops of them, make them not so harsh. I really like this one. It works really good. I haven't had to use anything over five yet. I don't see any difference on the games that I need to use it going to nine, but it uh, seems to work fine or four or five on some of these games. But where I really liked it was WRC, EAWRC. I had a problem with WRC having the uh, frequency, the harsh frequencies coming through because there's so much good gravel and all that going on. And so I had all these harsh frequencies and it didn't matter if I smoothed it all the way out to 10, I still was receiving those frequencies that I didn't like. Uh, so I was like, hmm. so I started playing with feedback frequency. Lo and behold, you could turn down your smoothness a lot so you don't blanket over all your other effects. And I started messing with feedback frequency, so I amplified uh, textures to where now I'm feeling gravel through the steering wheel. And then it, it also knocked down those other dirty frequencies as well, just kind of smoothed them over. So it's a very powerful uh, little feedback um, frequency setting here. So I really like that one. For instance, I'll show you my settings for EAWRC. Here it is. Oh, I was messing with it yesterday. So I did the several of them uh, the other day to uh, show you, but let me see. Oh, that's the standard one. Sorry. Mine is, oh, let me go back here. 
EAWRC. There we go. There's my EAWRC. I had smoothness off and I had frequency up to four. Inertia was around seven. Everything was pizza keen. Actually, I, I think it didn't show my latest here. See, WA, EAWRC, T, TJR. Yeah, that was it. That was the right one. So, this is the settings that I ran. I was just double checking to make sure I was the cloud and what I have normally on my local was pulling the same information. So, I didn't realize if I updated the cloud or not. Uh, so, that's another thing. <laughs> you can pull from either one uh, as well uh, separately. But, yeah, feedback frequency works great. I uh, highly recommend you play around with that one. You can play around with that one over smoothness. Maybe you're going to get what you need out of it, uh, the feeling you need. So that's pretty cool. Again, here as you call me going through here, you got your game filters and tag filters the same as in the other, but you can uh, either on the GT Neo or your wheel settings, right? But here you can do save. So if I'm happy with this, I can do a save as. I can put in my name here or whatever game it applies to. And we're good, right? Or you can add custom tags to it. I have no need for the custom tags, but you could do that as well. Maybe you're, you're, you have so many in here listed, you want to name all your custom tags, meaning maybe all your GT3 car settings, right? You can do that, or GT4, or G, you know, whatever. Heart's content. <laughs> but anyway, that is how to save it. But one improvement I liked on, I would like to see is, is see the Simagic fine tune preset. Have another drop down here where it says custom. Instead of this just filling in custom all the way, I would like to be able to be able to select and switch between each two. Because here it's not very apparent that you know, as I roll through here and pick a different different feature, then I'm able to come back up here and click on the fine tune presets and then see all my cloud savings and local preset settings, right? But yeah, that is how it works. You can course any of them that you have. You can upload it just by clicking this button here. So that's it works easy peasy, right? What else here? That is it, actually. That's all for this for this uh, basic settings here. And, and, oh, sorry, one more thing. I almost forgot. Other effects. Other effects. This is the default effects that pulls the information from the end game. So, if you highlight over here, it says these are active effects produced by the game. Default is one hundred percent. All it means is whatever you set in game is this. This is going to pull one hundred percent of that setting over into here, and then you're going to be layering on top of that setting right so just like you would normally do it on any other game you can turn all of these off and then uh, close it and then you're just using only these settings and you're ignoring what's in game uh, that may be pop that may be something you want to do i did experiment with it it does actually make a difference but i generally just leave these all on 100 here and then center damper off and mechanical spring which is a really old setting makes it feel like force feedback, fake force feedback uh, to where the wheel will spring back into place like a rubber band, right? You wouldn't, I don't even know why you have it here. You wouldn't need it. But, uh, oh, well, I, I do know. If you're playing a really old game uh, that has no force feedback in it, you can add some force feedback with this mechanical spring feeling to it. So I don't think most people really play really old games, but it's neat that they cover all this stuff. All right, so now that covers everything. Now we'll go over to the tree here uh, on the left, go to games. This is important here as well. Now I'm gonna talk about telemetry here and uh, also launching your games. Alrighty, so uh, we're in the game manager again here. Uh, we have games selected. You have your list of your installed games and refresh this to you know, make sure it pulls in the latest and greatest if there's any updates. And then all your um, supported games as well. Forza, for some reason, just comes in down here. It doesn't list it as installed games, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> for some reason, excuse <clears throat> me. But go to Forza because I want to talk about telemetry and ADP settings for telemetry. So some games like MS2, for instance, will launch my D-Box settings automatically. As soon as I launch the game, it'll go in. I don't have to set anything specific. No, no UDP port specifically for that game. Other ones like Forza and EA's, uh, EA games, you need to set it. So what this is, is in the telemetry support you have uh, for this particular game, it suggests on the game guide here that I put the telemetry here, right here at 1024, the data out as being car dash, and then here's the address, and then data out obviously on, right? These are the settings I need to go into the game for it to send the telemetry to my wheel and then have all the RPMs and everything going, right? 
Now, I, I don't want to exclude my motion rig, so I was really happy to see that they have I have a uh, forwarding, so you enable forwarding. Uh, which means that now whatever my motion rig needs, I can forward it onto that one there. Which oddly enough, the setting for my motion isn't R dash, it's sled. So it works anyway, so I'm not going to complain. But uh, I was worried about, well, dang, one says sled, the other one says car dash. Will they still work? It does. So thankfully that works. But anyway, set it to the telemetry of your of what you need for all your lights and stuff to pull in, and then you can add the uh, forwarding here to work for your motion or in a sense for your uh, sim commander or any other butt kickers and stuff you need uh, to use sim was it sim hub it has their own uh, control for your transducers as well built in there so if you're using sim hub you can forward it over to sim hub right really cool to see that that working now touching on telemetry if you're interested in getting certain wheels that have certain lights Let's say you want to spend your $800 on, say, FX Pro at Apex Sim Racing using my affiliate link. A little plug there. But uh, you can see your favorite game. Does it work? Does it list the gear indicator that I So in this case, it does. It works with Forza Motorsport. RPM works, throttle, positioning, running laps, best laps, all that will display. But you also list out the things that don't display on there. So that way you can uh, justify whether... It's worth the money if this is the only game that you really like playing the most. Probably not. This is a sim game, sim K game, and you, you really don't need a thousand dollar wheelbase to play a sim K game, right? <laughs> uh, this is just when we dabble into other fun fun games. We really got this for hardcore sim racing. But when you come over to a AMS2 telemetry support, um, you got all the same settings. It tells you everything that's been working and not working as well. So take I, I'd say take a list at the look at this list here even if you haven't bought sim magic but you're interested in getting into the system take a look at this and see if all your games are supporting uh this particular rim that you may want to want to use and then again i'll touch on real quickly here the game guide they do give you a game guide here uh based off of their recommendations uh, of course how to set the settings here as well force for the force feedback settings here they say custom set it to 60 0 50 and that way it's pulling the settings in from this hardware, right? Uh, so that is, and then of course here the system, this is just to enable, actually telemetry is what this is for to enable for AMS2. But they have these guides for every game. Really cool. And then of course, if you go to devices and use base and then use their guide here, AMS2, recommended force level applied. You use, you're using both of their guides and it's a good starting point to start with and then start modifying whatever you want right going back to games here one last thing is device config this is pretty cool so normally if you want to launch a certain game preset for say, in my case ams2 i have ams2 lmdh cars here as well if i wanted to launch those i could edit that because this is what i'm playing the most maybe at this particular time i can have that as a standard launch it's going to launch my by my, uh, my uh, base settings based off of that. Generally, I don't. Generally, I just uh, come over here and, and leave it as AMS2 TJR because I got this dialed in pretty good to where it feels good on, on most of the cars. But if you do have certain presets like their F1 or ND type cars and stuff, you're definitely going to want to mess with your base set here, your base presets. But you can launch it automatically from here, which is cool. You just got to click the switch. And that's it. It launches it. Otherwise, if you didn't do that, that means that once you launch your game, you'd come over here to the base and then you would select whatever game that you're playing. And that way it's going to pull in these settings live right, right then and there. But it's just an extra step you have to do. So this is a really handy, handy little, little switch actually to put on. And that'll actually activate your pedal presets, your base preset and your wheel presets as well. So like I said, I like all these particular LEDs. It'll launch those LEDs all in one sweep. I don't have to click on anything in the, in, 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 in the individual devices and switch around things, right? You can just launch whatever your favorite is. I really like that. That's pretty powerful. All right. So, and then of course you can hit play, launches the game, and then uh, you're good to go. Rock and roll. Right? All right. So that pretty much, <clears throat> excuse me, that pretty much covers everything on this sim, or sim command. I want to say sim commander, but the sim pro manager software so i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was very helpful to you if you have any questions or suggestions that it's something i may have missed that can be helpful for the rest of the community 
please list them, list them, comment below. Love to hear from you. And if you need some help with something, I'll, I'll tr more than happy to try to help you as much as I can. So until next time, I'll see you on the track. I'm out.